Hello lovely people. This week I am here with my Mystic Readathon and Mythathon reading wrap up. Sophie Vlogs. I posted my Mystic Readathon TBR a few weeks ago and then after posting that I watched um Jesse at Bowtie and Books video all about book recommendations for the Mythathon readathon and they were so enthusiastic about it that I just thought, hey, why don't I combine the two and have a mythtastic August? So we did. So, um I'm just gonna go through it. <laughs> um I started off the month by reading Scarlet by Marissa Mayer, which is the um second book in the Lunar Chronicles. I talked in my Myth Take Readathon TBR video about what prompts they fulfilled, so I'm only gonna mention what prompts the Mythathon books fulfilled because I didn't mention those first. So um for Mythathon I went for Team Hades because I'm a Leo, which is a fire sign. Um, and so I read that for the books where um, you're fighting against an unjust regime, because if that's not what the Lunar Regime is, I don't know what it is. Um, I enjoyed this. Um, I read Cinder, the first book in the series, five years ago, so um, it was a little fuzzy on certain details, but I think I enjoyed this more than Cinder, because um, Cinder, I really loved all of the ideas in it, like I loved the way that the Cinderella story was interpreted, but because it stuck very closely to the Cinderella story, the plot in many ways was quite predictable. I was reading it because I was enjoying the world building and seeing how it was adapted. I wasn't reading it feeling like, what's going to happen next, because I could sort of guess. Whereas with Scarlet, um, it went places which were, were more interesting to see where it was going to go. Um, as the title would suggest, it incorporates um, Little Red Riding Hood into it, and that was interesting seeing how that sort of was played with a little bit, so there's the beats that you would expect, but how are they going to be done? Um, yeah, I enjoyed having new character perspectives. One of my um, problems with this series is it just feels like the pacing is very slow. Like, we're two books in, and I still feel like we haven't really got into the meat of it, which is not it's not like I didn't enjoy it, I did enjoy it and um, I think the world building is great and I'm enjoying these new characters that are getting weaved in and I am interested to see where it is going to go. I do feel like we are taking a little bit of a long time to get there, but at the same time, like, if I'm having fun, I'm going to check out the third book at some point, so like, a solidly enjoyable read. Um, after that I moved on to The Silence of the Girls by Pat Barker, which as well as fulfilling some Mistake Readathon prompts, it also fulfilled for Mythathon. Um, focusing on disempowered voices, because this is giving voice to um, the slave women from the Iliad, specifically Briseis. Um, I was so intrigued to read this one, because I've heard so much discussion about it already, and, um, you know, Briseis is my girl, I wrote my dissertation on Briseis, I'm hoping to turn my dissertation into, like, either a series of videos, or just one super long video, I haven't decided yet how that's going to work, but um, this gave me all my Briseis feels again, because this gave me a lot to think about. Um, one of the things I've heard critiqued is the, like, narrative style in this, so you begin and it's Briseis' point of view, and then at a certain point you start to get chapters from Achilles' point of view, you start to get chapters that are sort of, like, a little bit exploring more people's perspectives and stuff like that, and I know some people feel like this would have been more powerful if it was all from Briseis' point of view. I think because I went in with the knowledge that the perspective was going to change, I was, like, prepared for it so it wasn't so jarring to me. I think if I had gone in without that knowledge because this is so marketed as from the slave women's point of view changing that does feel a little jarring at times um this does not hold back from showing you the realities of what it is like to be a slave in this society so you know like there's real trigger warnings for like rape sexual assault that sort of thing um and none of the plot points surprised me because i have studied the iliad and i know the story but i still very much really enjoyed seeing how it was interpreted and seeing how it was told and I feel like there's a lot I want to sit and mull over and I'm going to try and weave this book into the dissertation video I do and give some more in-depth feedback on that a bit I think because I've got feelings, I've got thoughts. <laughs> um, after that I moved on to um, Bitter Greens by Kate Forsyth. This is a Rapunzel retelling. Um, it takes a view, it's exploring um, Charlotte Rose de la Force is um, the woman from 17th century France who wrote the version of Rapunzel that we most commonly know. Um, so this part explores her perspective and her life and then it's also interweaving the Rapunzel story and sort of speculating on how she would have came to know this tale and blah blah blah. So um, 
the really strong world building in this so when we are in 17th century France it is so full of detail like I've um, I enjoy 17th century history so I have read some of it and I've also seen shows like Versailles um, so it really did do a really good job of like evoking a lot of like the visuals and stuff that you would expect to be associated with Versailles and Louis the Sun King and stuff like that so that was like really well detailed and the same for the um, the Rapunzel plotline explores like 16th century um, Venice and stuff like that so a lot of this this um, sort of setting was done in a very evocative way. Um, occasionally I struggled with the Charlotte plotline a little bit. So at the start of this narrative Charlotte is sent, um, she's set in exile to an abbey to learn to be a nun um, and then it gives you flashbacks to Charlotte's life and sort of like um, the defining things that have defined her life. A lot of the defining things are romances. I found myself being less interested in her romances the more this went on because I know the end point is that she's going to end up in this nunnery like I understand that these things will probably not end very well and one thing I will say about this book is that there is a lot of sexual violence in this book against women and if that's something that is not something that you're very comfortable reading about don't read this because it does permeate a lot of this text because a lot of this is focusing on um, both in in both plot lines um, women being exploited and then also women trying to um, gain power through whatever means they can um, sometimes that is through sexual power and stuff like that so there is a lot of exploration of um, things that tend to result in sexual violence against women so that is like a big trigger warning for this book because at times I found that a little bit I, we were going into great depth in certain like love affairs and stuff like this and then as they turned nasty I just I felt like we sat with them for quite a while and I was like okay I understand things are going not very nice it's not always the most fun to read about so my strength for this is that I found it really interesting seeing how the Rapunzel tale was woven in especially how the tale of Rapunzel and constriction to tower and imprisonment and stuff like this um, you can so see that mirrored in the court of Louis the Fourteenth because there were such strict rules about what had to be done at each time of day. You're so beholden to what Louis is doing that there is uh, a sense of imprisonment. Versailles is wonderful and glittering and beautiful, but at the same time, it costs you so much to be there. You have to abide by all of these strict rules, and you are beholden to the whim of the king. So there was a really nice mirroring there between um, what Charlotte views as freedom from her family background slowly becoming more and more constricting in the same way that you're seeing the Rapunzel character be more and more restricted and stuff like that. So those were some real strengths. Um, I think sometimes I got a little bit tired of some of the romancy bits and stuff, but um, on the whole, I did really enjoy it, and I think it's really well written, and I'd be interested to see what else Kate Forsyth has done. The final book I read for Mistake Readers on was Flame in the Mist by Renee Adir. This is inspired by Mulan, but it takes place in Japan. Um, Mariko is on her way to be like engaged to like the royal prince when her baggage train is ambushed and she barely escapes with her life. She is decided that she needs to find out what's going on before she can return to her family because otherwise her life is still in danger because someone wants her dead. Um, and this sort of follows from there. So she tries to ingratiate herself in with this gang that she thinks is responsible. All the while, her brother, who is, um, you know, like a trained samurai warrior, is trying to follow her trail and figure out what's happened to her. So you've got all of these threads and they sort of like are being woven together. Um, I enjoyed this. I thought it was fun. I think this is the first time I've read like Japanese fantasy, so I would really enjoy any recommendations for other fantasy books that are like set in Japan and that sort of stuff because I did really enjoy that aspect of this and sort of like I know the basic concept of samurais and stuff, but it was interesting to get a little bit more insight into like the rules of honor that you have to follow and just like the different the way that the society is formed and that sort of thing. So though that was really interesting. Um, Mariko grew on me as this book went on. At the beginning, um, her brother perspective was telling you about how, like, oh, she's smarter than anyone in the room at all times. But in her perspective, I just wasn't getting that. She was, like, not reading people correctly and not, like, reading the social cues and understanding what was happening. So, like, at the beginning, I was a bit like, oh, is this just, like, when you say someone is good at something but you don't actually give any evidence? Um, but as the book went on, I enjoyed seeing her, I don't know, I, I, I settled into her character a bit more, I think. I think I found her a bit more um, 
with it. <laughs> I think one thing is that I thought there was going to be a bit more of like a fantasy magic element in this than there was, but I think that might be building up to the second book that having more of a presence. I don't know. I'm I think I would be interested to read the second book. I got this out of the library, so I think my library has the second book as well. So I think I'm interested in continuing the series. I like solidly enjoyed it. I found it really interesting. Um I there were bits of it which like her brother and I'm not like super necessarily um invested in the relationship yet, but I also don't hate the relationship. I'm just sort of I've got I've got I've got some some little bubbly feelings and I would be interested to read the second book to see how they like continue and play out and that sort of thing. Um on to the rest of my Mythathon books. Um for the prompt, a book that has been sat on your shelves for far too long, I read Damsel by Elena K. Arnold. Um this has been on my shelves for too long because my it hasn't been on there for that long, but my friend has lent this to me and I feel like I've had it a little bit longer than I should have because I was reading other things. So now I've decided to read it for this prompt. Um and it fits with this theme very well because this is a very um dark take on fairy tales. The reason why my friend wanted me to read this is because um, she's doing a children's literature masters and they read it as part of her course and in the seminar on it, it was very divisive. A lot of people loved it, a lot of people hated it. Both of us are sort of middle ground, feeling a little conflicted. Um, there are major trigger warnings for this book, um, specifically sexual assault, rape, animal abuse, for sure. I'm probably forgetting some because this is a real let's go a bit dark take on it which um, essentially this book starts off with this Prince Emery who has in order to become king he has to slay a dragon save the damsel take the damsel home marry her they become you know king and queen and rule happily ever after type thing except there's more to it than it seems so this focuses on Amma who is the damsel who is rescued from the dragon and then, um, you know, her time leading up to the marriage and stuff. And we're really examining these tropes and we're, there, there are points being made about the inherent misogyny of it and that sort of thing. Um, one of the things I think that um, is one of my niggles about this is I feel like, okay, I have, <laughs> I have two things. Number one, I think for a book that is being marketed as YA, I think there are some very heavy topics in this which at the very least should have trigger warnings attached. I've mentioned a couple of them, but it really permeates this text. Oh, abusive relationships as well, because this is textbook abusive relationships. The way that Emery is dealing with Alma is very um, using... Um, being very, very horrible and then suddenly turning around and being very, very nice to try and dis destabilise whether, like, she can't hate him because then he's nice to her, but then and it, it's this whole cycle of abuse, absolutely, and it's a point that is deliberately being made, but I just still think it is a point that should have some sort of trigger warning attached to it because it does go into so much detail about certain things. Um, as well as that, um, I think sometimes it's a little simplistic. Um, there were times when it's very easy to hate Emery because he is so horrible and there's a conflict at the heart of this which I think would have been much more of a complex a take on a, on a trope if maybe he hadn't have been so absolutely just an asshole um, because it means that you root for his destruction whereas there's a conflict that Amma has which I think might have been a little bit more um, complexly explored if maybe he wasn't awful if these were tropes who are there fulfilling their tropes but she still has to do x thing this is very vague because i don't want to spoil the end of it i found the ending quite satisfying because it's what i was rooting for to happen this whole book um and there are there are really interesting points being made here about the nature of tropes about the nature of fairy tale and about um whether we fill the roles that we're given and stuff like that and um particularly in the in the figure of the queen mother i think there's a really interesting discussion about um complicity and women who instead of helping people who are in situations that they used to be in instead decide to consolidate power that sort of thing um as you might be able to tell a lot of conflicting feelings on this um it is not an easy book i think i am glad that i've read it because it has led to some interesting discussions and it has made me think I'm still not entirely comfortable with the marketing of this book, I think. Okay, final book for Mythathon was the group book, which was A Curse So Dark and Lonely by Bridget Kemmerer. Is that your name? All of the stickers are all over the last part of her surname, so I think that's right. 
Um, this is a Beauty and the Beast retelling. Um, it follows Harper, who has cerebral palsy, and she gets dragged into, quite literally dragged into, um, this world with um, Prince Ren and his captain of the guard, Grey, and they are doomed to repeat the cycle over and over again until he gets um, a girl to love him. He will, at the end of every season, transform into the Beast, wreak havoc, and then the clock is reset. Except for this time, it is the final season. Um, and then it, it just explores that. Um, I really was surprised by how much I enjoyed this because um, I will say Beauty and the Beast is not my favourite fairy tale to see explored. Um, whereas this actually by the end of it I was really gripped. It took me a little while to get into it. I feel like it has quite a slow build because it's building up this world. It's sort of giving you... Um, you 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 take the while for you to find your feet and get a sense of what the landscape is like, and then it starts building up these slightly more political plot lines and stuff like that. By the end of this, I was really gripped. I I don't know how I feel about the ending. I think, um, I don't. I liked the ending, but I also felt like there were a couple of bits which maybe could have been done a little differently. I don't know. I haven't quite modelled that out yet. I only finished this last night. Um, I'm slowly losing my voice the more this goes on, and I don't know why. But, um, so we'll try and wrap this up quickly. Essentially, I really enjoyed Harper as a heroine. She really grew on me as this went on. She is fierce and brave, but in a way that is very caring. Um, her cerebral palsy felt like an aspect of her that was that was there, and it was an aspect of her as a person rather than being like something that's just like thrown in and then is never mentioned ever again. It was brought up. It was like part of who who she is and what makes her how she is. Um, Ren and Grey. Um, I really like, I liked both of them. There, it felt like there was like a sort of love triangle being set up and I'm never really super interested in love triangles, they're just not really my thing unless everyone loves each other. That is one of my things. Um, so I still, on the love side, I, I didn't love how this ended with that sort of relationship three thing. Um, but I'm, again, I'd be interested to see what the second book does, where the second book goes, how these threads are going to be woven together again. Um, I'm certainly, I did enjoy this enough to want to read the second book. I think it was a, a, a nice surprise, a nice way to end the readathon. Um, yes, as we can all tell, my voice is starting to go for some reason. So I'm going to end it here. I hope this has not been too rambly. I hope it's been vaguely concise. Did you do both either of these readathons? How did you get on with it? I would love to hear your thoughts on any of these. Um, I really enjoyed dedicating so much of August to just like exploring fairy tale and mythology stuff. At times it's been a little bit hard because there, a lot of these books have had sexual violence in them and I think that's highlighting that that is something that is there in a lot of these original stories that you can't just do a retelling and ignore. Um, but that, with with that aside, um, it's been really fun to explore so many different fairy tales and mythologies and stuff like that. So I've had a really good time. I hope.